Hey, what's up guys? In this video, we're going to talk about QoS, which allows us to make sure that our network is used in the most efficient way when we are experiencing congestion. It makes sure that all the sensitive applications are prioritized to enhance the experience of our users or the customers on our network. This video is one of the lessons that I'm creating on kbtrans.com for the course on the CCNA 200-301. The CCNA is one of those certifications that can help you start or boost your career in the networking industry or just the tech industry in general. We go from zero to engineer, teaching you all the concepts you need to know to go tech and pass the CCNA and have enough knowledge to start your career in this field. So if you're interested, go on the website kbtrans.com and check out the course. And if you go under the exam blueprint of the CCNA 200-301, under IP services and 4.7, we need to explain the forwarding per hop behavior or PHB for QoS, such as classification, marking, queuing, congestion, policing, and shaping. So we're going to cover this point here, and by the end of it, you will be very comfortable to go to the exam knowing what QoS is and what are the techniques that are used for QoS. And then the first lesson is the introduction to QoS, where I'm going to give you all the essential that you need to know and why we need QoS on a network. First of all, I'm going to tell you what is QoS, and then I'm going to give you some network parameters that you can find in a network, like bandwidth, delay, jitter, and loss or packet loss. And then I'm going to give you some advantages of using QoS on a network, and then I'm going to give you some techniques that can be used to implement QoS in a network. Of course, QoS quality of service. I don't have to say quality of service. It's going to be QoS all the time. QoS is a way to manage a network or manage network resources so that all the applications get what they need to function well. If you are in a critical environment where your resources are very low, like we're going to see, if your bandwidth is low, for example, you're going to experience congestions. So how do you deal with congestions so that some applications like voice over IP, are not going to suffer from the congestion you're seeing on your network. QoS is the use of all those techniques that can be implemented so that your network functions in a very optimal way for all kinds of applications that you have in your network. That means that you can give high priority to some application and low priority to some others. And by application, we understand, for example, voice over IP, which can be very demanding, or video conferences, or streaming media, or gaming, and all of that. When you are talking on the phone, you need to be given high priority compared to someone who's reading emails. So it's very useful when there is a congestion. Today, there was actually a question to know if QoS is still relevant, but I would say it's still relevant in many applications, mostly for ISPs or internet service providers or service providers in general, because you have some SLAs to respect in regard to your customers or the different contracts you have with your customers, you need to make sure that some packet can never get delayed in case of congestions. And service providers can experience congestions all the time if there is any kind of fiber cut or anything like that. Even though on local networks, like your home network, you may not need QoS because you have a limited amount of devices and you may have enough bandwidth to go to the internet. So you don't have to do all the marking or classifications of your packet and so on. But if you are in a big environment, you may have to classify your traffic so that every important packet are given priority in case there is any congestion. Before going deeper and going to the whiteboard to explain what is QoS, let's cover these few network parameters. First of all, I'm going to start by bandwidth. A bandwidth is the maximum transfer rate you can have on a network connection or internet connection. Let's say, for example, most of the laptops today have a network interface card of one gigabit per second. And this is the user A or the laptop A connected to the switch B. And the switch also has one gigabit per second on all the ports. So when you connect your laptop to your switch, you have a bandwidth of one gigabit per second to use for the traffic that you have. It's actually the speed that connects you to another device. When you're talking about your bandwidth in terms of um, internet connection, that is the speed you have between you and your ISP or your service provider. The second parameter is the latency or the delay. This is the time it takes a packet to go from the point A to the point B in the network or across the network. Let's say we have a web client A here trying to get a page from the web server B. The time between when the packet leaves the client and get to the server is called a latency and it's usually measured in millisecond. And for applications like voice over IP, latency should be preferably less than 150 milliseconds. The third parameter is jitter. The jitter is the variation in latency. So the latency can vary between different packets. It cannot be exactly the same. But at a certain point, if that variation is so high, 
you will have problem with voice over IP, for example. Uh, let's say we have A and B that are talking on the phone, voice over IP. And we have four different packets. One, two, three, four. This is the communication. And this is happening instantaneously. So this packet will be sent to B. Let's say the packet number one takes 80 milliseconds to get there. The packet number two takes 200 millisecond the packet number three takes um let's say 50 millisecond the packet number four takes 150 millisecond so what is going to happen on this end here from the user b perspective or from the phone on the user b side these are coming at a very different speed with very different latencies and from one to two we have a jitter of about uh, 120 millisecond from 2 to 3, we have 150 milliseconds. From 3 to 4, we have 100. And this is too high. What you need for voice over IP, for example, should be something less than 30 milliseconds. It can vary, but it needs to be less than 30 milliseconds. Because in this case, what's going to happen is that the packet number 3 can even arrive before all the others because it only takes 50 milliseconds for the packet number 3 to get there. And after that, we can get the packet number 1, which takes 80 milliseconds and then the packet number four, and then the packet number two, because this is happening instantaneously. So it can give a very different message on the other end. So the user on the other end will not be able to hear the message correctly because we had very high jitter between the packets. So the loss is just like the name says, the loss of packets. And many reasons can create loss of packet in a network, including congestions. And I'm going to tell you how QoS can help us reduce the loss of packet in a network by all the different techniques that are going to be put in place. And now let me go back and explain what is QoS exactly. So in a nutshell, let's say we have two different users in a network. The user number one, that is on a call, so using voice over IP. And the user number two, that is reading emails. So what you have to know is that all the packets are not created equal because these two different services have different requirements to work well. Voice over IP, for example, is real time and email is not real time. This, this can be done anytime because usually the user number one is talking to a user number three on the other end and we have a server number one here. This is the email server with all the emails on it. So all the user number two needs to do is go on the, on the server and retrieve the emails using uh, protocols like uh, IMAP. So these are two different applications. And if they are connected to the same network with the router number one on this end and then router number two on the other end, and let's say we have a connection of uh, running at one gigabit per second between these two different uh, routers. And we don't only have two users on this network. We have more than one user, I mean, more than two users. We may have uh, thousands of users. On this other end, we also have thousands of users. So let's say everything is normal. Everything is below one gigabit per second. Every packet that comes in for voice will be sent to the router too. Every packet that comes in for email will also be sent to the router too in real time. So the problem happens when there is a congestion, which means that we have more traffic to send than bandwidth available. Let's say the router number one at some point find itself with 1.4 gigabit per second to send because all the thousand of users decided at the same time to stream 4K. So what happens is that the router number one can only send to one gigabit per second on the line. So 0 0.4 need to be put somewhere. And each interface on a network device has some level of memory that is allocated. So this router can save 0 0.4 in memory, waiting for the line to be open for it to be sent. And in the 0 0.4 that we have, we may have many type of traffic, but with QoS, we can make sure that the traffic from the voice guy can never be put on hold. So the packet for voice over IP will always have priority over the packet for email. Because when I'm on the phone, I don't want the phone to be breaking up. So I don't want to have delays. I don't want my packet to be dropped. Not even me, but the phone will never allow, I mean, doesn't want my packet to be dropped. 
And the good thing is that congestions usually happen for a very short period of time. So we may have like five seconds when this link is really full and we can get more than one gig per second. So QoS will make sure that voice traffic is classified and marked so that when it gets here, router one knows how to identify the traffic and how to give it priority over all the other traffic. And even if we have a queue, if we have a lot of packets in this memory here, the router can also drop some packets if we still need space for some other priority packets. So if we have other packets that have higher priority, we can even drop low priority packets from the queue. And the user number one will have the best experience with his phone call. The user number two will not even notice anything because it's email. So when he click on, the, on Outlook, for example, the email can take five seconds to load it will not be a big deal for user number two, but the user number one and the user number three, they have to have the best experience when they are on the network. So we're talking about congestion here and how packet can be handled when there is a congestion to make sure that all the critical applications have what they need to work well. So that is QoS in a nutshell. So next, let me give you some advantages of QoS. First of all, we have unlimited application prioritization. As I said, voice over IP, streaming, gaming, or things like that, they need very good network performances. So that's why with QoS, we can make sure that if we have any congestion, those applications will not be affected as much. Uh, compared to to others and then we have a better resource or bandwidth management if you have a low bandwidth to the internet for example you can give priority to those applications that are really important let's say you have a small you are a small business with 500 employees and your uplink to the internet is 100 megabit per second so let's say you have 500 employees and they can also use their phones on the Wi-Fi of the company. And they also have their workstations. So you have 500 workstations and you have 500 uh, phones. So you put the phones on Wi-Fi. First of all, the, the 100 megabit per second, this is very low. Even for, for me, like a home user, this is low for me. And you have 500 workstations. First of all, you need to make sure that those workstations only do what is required for work. And what you're going to do on your firewall is that you're going to block Facebook, uh, TikTok, all those, Instagram, and so on. You're going to block all of those. Even file sharing, you can block that on, 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 on the firewall for these workstations here so they can only do what work requires because we have very low bandwidth going to the internet. And on the Wi-Fi, where they have their phone, they can have the freedom to do whatever they want on the phone. But what we're going to do is that we can shape or polish the traffic on a certain VLAN where these phones are connected. Let's say the workstations are connected to the VLAN number five and the phones are connected to the VLAN number three, for example. At the firewall, we can implement some traffic shaping to make sure that the VLAN number three only have five megabit per second at max to use on this link here. So we have 95 meg per second for the VLAN number five. We will make sure that the users under the VLAN number three will never fill up the link going up to the internet. QoS can help us enhance the user experience. Remember the guy on the phone? He will have a beautiful phone call and close whatever cell he was on. We can also manage point-to-point -point traffic, which means that you have your uh, user A and user B, and you may have different nodes in the middle, and your traffic goes from node to node. We can make sure that every single connection is working at its best by using QoS, and this is actually what is called per hop behavior because we can go on each hop and implement some level of QoS to make sure that a certain packet goes from A to B with the best performance possible. We can also prevent packet loss by making sure that some very important packet are not put in the queue or are not dropped by the router, and we can reduce latency lesson by picking what can be hold and what need to be given priority. These are the advantages of uh, QoS in a network. Next, I'm going to give you some techniques that can be used to implement QoS because the way I talked about it, that is in my mind as a human. So how do I do so that a router or a switch, which are network devices, can do what I think in my head? So I need to implement some techniques, including traffic classification. This is where you classify your traffic in different classes or different categories. Voice over IP, for example, will be in a certain class and emails will be in some other class. And those different classes are going to be served differently. That is what we call here 
differentiated services like DSCP or class of service. We're going to see this when we go uh, deeper in, uh, in uh, future lessons. Another technique is traffic policing. This is where we police the flow leaving or entering the device and making sure that the traffic stays below a certain threshold. Let's say we have an agreement with a customer to deliver 50 megabit per second and at times the customer sends us 70 megabit per second. That's going to be 20 megabit per second over what we agreed on on the contract. We can then price the 20 megabit per second differently compared to the 50 megabit per second and this can be done when the traffic is entering or leaving a device so it can be done uh, both ways next we have traffic shipping this is where you make sure that your traffic will never go beyond a certain threshold and the example i gave you with the users on the wi-fi can illustrate this where you make sure that this VLAN will only use this much bandwidth depending on how much I have available in my network. So this usually applies to outgoing traffic on a network. And then we have congestion management. This is where you have a congestion in a network, but you already know how to manage your packet when there is a congestion. So using QoS, you can tell your device what packet to keep in the queue and how long they can stay in the queue or what packet to drop from the queue if there's no more space available so we can give priority to some other packets that are very important. And it usually applies to outgoing traffic as well. And then we have congestion avoidance. These are techniques that are put in place to make sure that you avoid congestion on your network. So these are the different techniques that QoS uses to make sure that the user has the best experience and all the applications are running without any problem when there is a congestion in a network. All right, guys, so this is all for the introduction to QoS. And in future lessons, we're going to go deeper into these different techniques, showing you what they do exactly and how they are applied on a network device. Thank you for watching. As I said, this is one of the many lessons that I have available on kbtrans.com for the course on the CCNA 200 301. So if you want to become an engineer, go there and check it out. It's available on the website. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, you can leave it in a comment. If you like what I do, like the video on YouTube and subscribe to the channel so you won't miss any of my future videos. And follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter to stay in touch. Thank you and take care.